All right, everyone. Welcome. Good afternoon. And thank you for being here and joining us today. Um, today we're celebrating the life of Marsha Purcell, hereafter in my comments, known as Mom. So if you're wondering who I'm referring to, that would be Marsha. Today we grieve our loss, but we also rejoice in her gain. And we, I hope, take great comfort in that gain. Um, as the Apostle Paul stated in Scripture, we do not grieve as those who have no hope. He didn't say we don't grieve, because yes, we grieve. But we are comforted in our grief, knowing that for followers of Christ, to die is gain. Mom was a passionate follower of Christ. Through the doorway of death, she is now in his presence with loved ones who have gone before in perfect peace, joy, and health. That is gain. Almost exactly halfway through mom's life, she was forever changed by Jesus at a small gathering in a small Catholic church in the middle of town. The second half of her life was literally a new life. Yes, her great love for Dr. Coy Purcell and her children remained unchanged, but she also had a newfound unquenchable love for her heavenly father, the Lord Jesus Christ, the presence and power of the Holy Spirit and the Bible, God's word. Mom believed, mom loved, and as you know, mom prayed. For many of us in this room, she prayed daily and by name. We dearly love her and will miss her. We'll be forever deeply impacted by her life. So here we gather to celebrate her life. We will do so mostly by magnifying the things that mom loved most, her Lord, her family, and music. Included are some of mom's favorite scriptures, hymns, and people. I was going to say children. I didn't want to go there. So um, listen, sing along, please, when the hymns play, and celebrate mom. Celebrate mom along with us. So as my nephew comes to read our first passage of scripture again, some of mom's favorites, and they are reading from mom's Bible, um, let's pray. Gracious Father, Thank you for your presence as we gather, and thank you for the precious gift that mom was to each of us. May we be forever grateful. God of all comfort, comfort our, comfort our hearts. By your spirit and with the certainty that mom is now with you, forever free from any sorrow, pain, or weakness, truly experiencing fullness of joy. I pray these things. And thank you in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen. All right, so I'll be reading Psalms 23 from actually from her Bible too. This is the New Living Translation. Translation. Um, so we're going to read it. To, um, psalm 23, a Psalm of David. The Lord is Marcia's shepherd. Marcia has have all I or Marcia needs. He lets Marcia rest in green meadows. He leads Marcia besides peaceful streams. He renews Marcia's strength. He guides Marcia along the right paths, bringing honor to his name. Even when Marcia walked through the darkest of valley, Marcia will not be afraid, for you are close beside Marcia. Your rod and your staff protect and comfort Marcia. You prepare a feast for Marcia in the presence of Marcia's enemies. You honor Marcia by anointing Marcia's head with oil. Marcia's cup overfloweth with blessings. Surely your goodness and unfailing love will pursue Marcia all the days of Marcia's life. And Mar Marsha will live in the house of the Lord forever. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. 
What's that? It'll get, okay. Sound guys. Uh, good afternoon, and thank you, everyone, for coming out. Um, not many people enjoy funerals, um, and I appreciate you coming out to honor my mom. Uh, I am Eddie Miller. I am the oldest of Marsha's six children. Um, fortunately, none of us preceded her in death. Uh, we have Tina, go through this in chronological order, right next to her, Lori, Bobby, Jeff, and her youngest, Jennifer, right there, with her. very good, so welcome, I'm glad to see you all, glad to see all of us here. Uh, in her will, mom left me her baby grand piano. Several of my siblings are musicians. I'm not one of them. <laughs> so I think even after 65 years of loving and counseling me, uh, she's still trying to craft me, guide me. Uh, there's apparently still some deficiencies that I have yet to fill uh, and all that. So for a few minutes this afternoon, I'm gonna go with my mom, the musician theme. Uh, she formally studied piano for 12 to 13 years in her youth, majored in classic piano, and played in an orchestra all before I was born. Um, so I guess maybe I derailed, derailed her life. Uh, <laughs> when I was an elementary-aged child um, at our house near Tucson Boulevard and Grant Road, uh, I was always amazed when Mom would sit down I was totally amazed, and she would flawlessly play Lafaja's ritual dance for piano solo. I'd uh, 
often through the years after that, requests that she play it when I'd come home, be it from college, medical school, whatever, for a visit. Mom, would you play fire dance for me? Um, I would like to familiarize you with one minute of this piece uh, with a YouTube video, which is not her, uh, but it gives you an idea of mom's talent and authority over the piano. It's an amazing piece. And later in life, I think her courage, tenacity, and wisdom to accept the things that she could no longer do when she was unable to play piano anymore. Uh, her baby grand piano uh, remained her companion in the living room until her death. Uh, this is one of those crazy classical piano pieces with arms crossing over the other, mostly 16th notes. I suspect it's gonna take me a week to learn it. Um, <laughs> if we could just show, this is a 60 second clip of La Faya's ritual dance for piano solo. Okay, I could have watched all four minutes of that, but we'll keep things uh, moving on. In the uh, 1960s, uh, our family would go over to my mother's parents' house. Her parents had moved uh, to Tucson from Chicago, and we would go over there every Sunday night for dinner. Uh, Grandma and Grandpa would make dinner for us, and we would watch the Ed Sullivan show, you know, Topo G. Joe, the Lennon sisters, uh, things like that. Uh, they would make uh, roast beef and Yorkshire pudding most commonly. Uh, but one particular Sunday evening, uh, there was a, a lot of excitement. There were four 20-year-old lads from Liverpool who had taken England by storm, and they were making their American debut that night. And despite some controversy at the time, because they had long hair, you may recall it went about a third of the way down their ears. If you look back at the pictures, uh, they had suits and ties on. I'm not sure what was t controversial, but they played rock and roll, and that was controversial at the time. Uh, but I was eight years old, uh, and my younger brothers and sisters were with me, and my mom uh, encouraged us to watch the Ed Sullivan show that night. And the excitement of listening to the rock of the Beatles, She Loves You, Yeah, 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 followed by the tender ballad, All My Lovin', and watching the women in the audience standing, screaming, and pulling their hair was another uh, moving musical moment for my mom and I. Uh, and just to begin closing on a uh, depressing note, because it is a funeral, um, and not for a pity party, but I want to express to you the strength that my mother had. When I was eight years old, uh, our father abandoned his family, returned to Illinois, and never paid child support or alimony. I mention this to show the incredible strength of my mom. Her education was in classic music. Unless you're Elton John, Liberace, or Billy Joel, that doesn't pay the bills, right? Uh, and she didn't have a professional career. What she did have after nine years of marriage as a good Catholic was five children, age eight and under. Uh, and she was now single and 31 years old, so younger than my daughter, Jessica. Both of my children, Dan and Jessica, have, uh, are blessed with two toddlers each. So you throw their, those four cousins together, toss in one uh, malcontent like myself, extract three of the adults, and you have an idea of the environment that my mom raised us in and why she didn't have time probably to force me to play piano. 
Um, but she did an amazing uh, job. What she did do is get a job as a process server, and I'm not sure how many people are familiar with that, but that's the you got served person, uh, as in you got served a lawsuit, a subpoena, a summons. Your butt is going to court. So nobody was happy in particular to see my mom. She never got any thank yous for it, but that's what she did. Uh, did. So she had the money to raise us until she uh, met and married my stepfather, the late Dr. Coy Purcell, uh, and that was when I was in high school. So all I hope I've done here is added a few brush strokes to the portrait that is my mother, of a loving, talented, courageous mother, grandmother, great-grandmother, and friend. Uh, all of you know how fiercely she loved you and how sincere that love was. And I am teachable. I've gone out and gotten simple sheet music for the Beatles. You can play it with one hand or two, my choice. <laughs> so I'm making a, making a start. Uh, thank you, that's my uh, eulogy. Next is uh, Kathleen Purcell. Graciously and time-consumingly went through a lot of my mother's photos and has, and has created a nine-minute video. We'd appreciate it if you'd uh, look at her through the years and some of her joys. Thank you.
Ashley Lutzelberger. 
um, better known as Ashley Purcell, my maiden name. Um, Marcia was my grandma. And I am going to read Psalm 91, which I never knew was one of her favorites, which actually happens to be one of mine as well. So, those who live in the shelter of the Most High will find rest in the set shadow of the Almighty. This I declare about the Lord. He alone is Martha's refuge and her place of safety, and he is her God, and she trusts him. For he will rescue her from every trap and protect her from every deadly disease. He will cover you with his feathers, and he shall shelter you with his wings. His faithfulness promise, his faithful promises are your armors and protection. So do not be afraid of the terrors of the night, nor the arrow that flies in the day. Do not dread the disease that stalks in the darkness, nor the disaster that strikes mid at midday. Though a thousand fall at your side, 10,000 are dying around you, those evils will not touch you. Just open your eyes and see how the wicked are punished. If you make the Lord your refuge, if you make the most high your shelter, no evil will conquer you. No plague will come near your home, for he will order his angels charge over you to protect you wherever you go. They will also hold you up with their hands so you will not be hurt, not even your foot on a stone. You will trample upon lions and cobras and you will crush fierce lions and serpents under your feet. The Lord says, I will rescue those who love me. I will protect those who trust in my name. When they call on me, I will answer. When they call, I will be there when they are in trouble. I will rescue and honor them and I will reward them with a long life and give them my salvation. I'm Dan Miller and Marcia was my grandma. I won't herald her accomplishments, challenges, or triumphs as a mother, grandmother, great-grandmother, and servant of God, because I only bore witness to a fraction of her life. Um, and others here can and have offered better tribute to her in this regard. But I will share a little bit about what she meant to me and some of my memories. Um, from my perspective as a child, she was the grandma with the fun toys, but also the disciplinarian. Um, in the fun toys department, she had a, a black Corvette, it's about this big, um, a glow worm, it's like these like accordion-like things, I don't know, um, and a wooden train set with little magnetic, uh, magnets that connected them. Um, in the, uh, as far as being a disciplinarian, suffice it to say she was not inclined to suffer my shenanigans, of which I offered many. Um, it's hard to overstate how important her family was to her. Um, she loved our family gatherings, I think, especially on Christmas Eve. Her favorite part, I think, um, was the Christmas carols. She kept these carol booklets that were published, I think, roughly between the, um, the, the transition from the Jurassic to Triassic period. Um, and they looked a little bit worse for the wear, um, to the point where I might have even rolled my eyes once or twice, like, why don't we upgrade? Um, but I came to see the wisdom of insisting that we keep them and continuing that tradition of singing together at our family gatherings um, because they <clears throat> served as her mechanism to, um, even for a brief moment, synchronize this large and boisterous family that we have that seems to continually keep growing um, with song and love and provide a thread of continuity that extends back through for decades. Um, it's an apt illustration of the broader role she played as a nexus of information about our family and friends, a coach for her, grand, for her children, a cheerleader for her grandchildren. She was stubborn but wise, a little bit cantankerous sometimes, but always loving. I am blessed to be a part of the family for which she served as matriarch for my entire life. Well done, Grandma. I love you. Oh. 
So this part of the service is where many would have like an open mic time, which I've discussed with my siblings, and we're not doing that. Call it testimonials, and what I have is I get to read to you just some things that were that family and friends um, wrote. Um, so we knew the length and could introduce that. And anyways, uh, that's what this is. Welcome to open mic time, but I will be the only speaker. Uh, so these first two uh, were responses to my sister when she sent out an email to a lot of mom's contacts uh, about mom's passing. And so I'm just going to tell you kind of the relationship, not use names because they, knew where they were not really sent saying, here's what I want you to read. Um, but so the daughter of mom, <laughs> give it away anyway, but the daughter of mom's lifelong, and lifelong friend, Simone, um, this is part of what she wrote in response. She was such a lovely person, a strong and supportive spirit who loved her family and friends so well. You know your mom and my mom have a lot of catching up to do. I know they are now happily reunited in heaven and talking away. I find that image comforting. And then a uh, beloved nurse who worked in my dad's office for years, um, she replied and said, you know, she was ready, just ready. I'm sure her heartache was knowing that she would leave behind all that she loved, you kids and her grandchildren. She was ready to be back in your father's arms referring to dad, <laughs> back in your father's arms and next to her parents. Um, Dan, a different Dan, this Dan from Illinois wrote this, um, Marcia was my godmother and always took the time to reach out to me with her faith and love. She was a wonderful person. I will miss her greatly. Ashley, who was up here reading, now, this is getting into some things that family wrote. Ashley wrote this. My grandma had the biggest heart for her friends and family. I will forever cherish our grandma and granddaughter dates and will always remember how she taught me proper etiquette. She left some of us etiquette books in her will. <laughs> I was one of them. I see a little passive aggression or something there, but anyways... Um, taught me proper etiquette and how to play the piano. I love you, Grandma, and will forever hold tight to the memories you gave me. Bobby, who read first. I would like to say that I loved all and will miss the lunches and holidays with Grandma. But most of all, will miss the strong supporter and prayer warrior that she was. Love you, Grandma. Daughter-in-law Kathleen wrote this. Thank you so much for teaching my children to love music, to love traditions, to love their family. Thank you for always having time for them and all the prayers for them, all your prayers for them. We will miss you. This one broke the stated guidelines about how long these should be. Jessica. Um, I had the right of refusal. She, in her defense, said, if this is too long, you know, let me know. We'll figure it out. But those who knew mom, and will, they'd appreciate this. So here we go. Um, a little more than a few sentences. When I think of the word that best describes grandma, thoughtful comes to mind. Despite having an incredible amount of grandchildren, she made each and every one of us feel appreciated and loved. Some of my earliest memories are of her watching my basketball games in elementary school at the JCC, followed by, you guessed it, ice cream at Swenson's. She came to my games even though I barely ever played, and when I did get to play, I'd dribble the ball into the corner. These memories meant so much to me, and Grandma continued coming to my games throughout high school. Luckily for her, I got some more playing time and to make it worth her while. She also got excellent courtside seats since she was one of the very, very few fans for which I will be forever grateful. In high school, I was also blessed with the opportunity to start working and thanks to, in part to our Sundays spent eating Sundays, the only place I wanted to work was Swenson's. I remember my selling point on my application was Marsha's granddaughter and it got me the job. Not only did she help get me the job, she helped make the job enjoyable. 
I love seeing her come in for a meal deal and a super Sunday, and didn't mind the extra tips either. Even as family grew and I got older, she was still so thoughtful. Just a few years ago, Grandma got me one of my favorite pre presents ever, presents I've ever received, sorry. A jigsaw puzzle centered around the street map of my house. Embarrassingly, it's the only puzzle I can recall never finishing. Turns out a map of Tucson is just a bunch of brown on brown. But now, every time I break it out again to try to work up the courage to finish it, I will always think of her. It'll probably be a few years until I can trust the twins around a puzzle, but I can't wait to share that memory with them as well. <clears throat> I love you, Grandma, and miss you, and hope you're enjoying a super Sunday in heaven. <laughs> Grandson Matt wrote, Thank you, Grandma, for instilling in your children the values of faith, family, and living life with intense fervor. They in turn pass those values on to your grandchildren, and now your grandchildren are passing those values on to your great-grandchildren. Your legacy will continue to live on for many generations to come. My sister Lori wrote, Mama, I will miss your chats and wise counsel. <clears throat> My inherited traits of strength and independence will always shine through me. I've been called a mama bear too many times to count, but I know exactly where those tendencies come from. Thank you, Father, for choosing my mom for me. Until we meet again, Mama, I love you. Your loving daughter, Lori. I saved this one for last, and you guys are going to have to bear, <laughs> bear with me because I've told family members that this is the one that I had the hardest time with, which is why I'm putting it last, so in case I got all snotty and snivelly. I would have time to recover while other things happen. So, this is from my sister Tina. And she wrote very eloquently. Sorry. It's always too soon to lose your mother. Mine left the earth four days before her 89th birthday. It was a long life, well lived, but, but I still grieve. I have so many friends who lost their moms at a much younger age. Well, I've seen their sadness and listened to them talk about how much they miss their mothers, and I felt so blessed to still have mine all these years. It's always too soon to lose your mother. Her voice and smile greeted me when I was born. She taught truth and honesty and discipline and faith. She had praise for me on my accomplishments, and she was tough on me when I disappointed her. It's always too soon to lose your mom. <clears throat> she looked forward to my calls as long as she wasn't just about to eat her dinner. I'm glad that wasn't something that I just heard. <laughs> because she was the mom who would always say, I don't hear from my kids enough, and I don't, and I don't, and, I, and it was, but then you'd call, and say, yes, I'm just about to eat my dinner, what do you want? or the news is on. But anyways, it, 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 just, it wasn't just me, so that's good. Um, as long as it wasn't just about time to eat dinner. And I loved that she took the time to learn how to text, use the internet, FaceTime from her iPhone, and enjoy Facebook. She taught me how to be a mom and that moms aren't perfect. I also saw that she was a completely devoted daughter, an only daughter to her parents. She loved me and she loved my five brothers and sisters. And while we, all know, while we all knew for the past several weeks that her time was coming soon, I know they will all join me in feeling that it's always too soon to lose your mom. <clears throat> I love you, mom. And may you rest in peace. And in the joy of meeting our Lord and Savior, give dad, grandpa, and grandma a big hug from me until I see you all again. And so now we are going to, the other, there's, you know, when we say we're going to play mom's, we said, let's play mom's favorite hymns and let's read mom's favorite scriptures. I'm like, that narrows nothing down. Um, so we're going to just read through the Bible and play the whole hymnal. Um, but 
Two of her favorites, of course, we already listened to Amazing Grace, and this is another one, How Great Thou Art, and uh, she loved Carrie Underwood and her voice, and so sing along if you would.
I am Brie Mishler, recently Brie Purcell. <laughs> I'm Marsha's favorite grandchild. And uh, I gotta save the best for last, right? We're gonna read Romans 8, 31 through 39. What shall we say about such wonderful things as these? If God is for us, who can ever be against us? Since he did not spare even his own son, but gave him up for us all, won't he also give us everything else? Who dares accuse us whom God has chosen for his own? No one. For God himself has given us right standing with himself. Who then will condemn us? No one. For Christ Jesus died for us and was raised to life for us, and he is sitting in the place of honor at God's right hand, pleading for us. Can anything ever separate us from Christ's love? Does it mean he no longer loves us? loves us if we have trouble or calamity or are persecuted or hungry or destitute or in danger or threatened with death? Or as the scripture says, for your sake, we are killed every day. We are being slaughtered like sheep. No, despite all these things, overwhelming victory is ours through Christ who loved us. And I am convinced that nothing can ever separate us from God's love, neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor demons, neither our fears for today, nor our worries about tomorrow, not even the powers of hell can separate us from God's love. No power in the sky above or in the earth below Indeed, nothing in all of creation will ever be able to separate us from the love of God that is revealed in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Well, mom is now basking in that love as never before. Um, again, we'll, several of us have said this, but thank you for being here today to celebrate her and that reality of God's love along with us. Um, my oldest brother um, wisely mentioned just before, in the hour before this, that it, this should be mentioned. And so to let you know that at, at mom's request, and this is great, her ashes are going to be mingled with my dad's and scattered from Windy Point. Um, and as I have here, and the love story continues. Um, she loved and was faithful to her family, her friends, and her Lord. I firmly believe that she has now heard the Lord saying something like, Marcia, my beloved child, well done, good and faithful servant. Enter into the joy of your Lord. I also believe that my brothers and sisters here will echo my words and my sentiment when I say, well done, Mom. We love you. As a testament to Mom and an exhortation to all of us, I'm going to close reading Romans from Romans 12, where it's written, let love be genuine. Abhor what is evil, hold fast to what is good. Love one another with brotherly affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Don't be slothful in zeal, be fervent in spirit, serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope, be patient in tribulation. And here's mom, be constant in prayer. My brother is gonna come and close in prayer afterwards. Please feel free to stay. I mean, I encourage you to stay. I mean, some of us, I'm looking around this room and there's people that I haven't seen in, yeah, not just years, decades, people that I was in Bible studies with when I was in high school, and just, it just, it's amazing. We're so appreciative of you being here. So feel free to stay afterwards. Some songs will be playing in the background um, that were meaningful to mom. Um, if you stay, you know, like beyond 10, 15 minutes, uh, you may be surprised at what you'll hear. They get progressively a little more upbeat as we go. Good afternoon, everyone. I will echo much of what has been said earlier today, but I think the Lord intended it this way. 
thank you to everyone for coming and being a part of this remembrance of my awesome mom. Our gathering of family and friends brings solace to the loss of her, but at the same time, it also brings us hope, hope of things that could come. Before I close in prayer, I'd like to share some thoughts. My mom was a godly woman of strength, prayer, faith, and steadfast love. This past week, watching Kathleen put the slideshow together, I was reminded of oh so many events and feelings that time does not permit me to go into here. But I would like to share this with my brothers and my sisters. I'd like to share this with Marcia's grandchildren and her great-grandchildren and the dear friends that join us here. On the night that she passed, a letter was given to each of her six children. And I would like to share the final paragraph of that letter with you all. It speaks of faith and prays a blessing over each of us. And I would like to extend that blessing and prayer to all of you gathered here. In the name of Jesus, our Lord, I bless each of you. Dear Eddie, Tina, Lori, Jeff, Bobby, and Jennifer. I ask him to always guide you, protect you, and correct you when you need it. I ask that he prosper the work of your hands and give you an overflowing heart of generosity and love towards all of your family and stay close to one another. Know God, love God, and serve God. May integrity be the guide and keep you on the path of righteousness always. In those words, you can hear her faith, love, and guiding us to follow the Lord Jesus. As we grieve the loss of Marcia and miss her conversation, her social media posts, her companionship, and yeah, she did kind of get familiar with emailing, texting, and stuff, but I think at times she also got those mixed up, so, and she'd respond to the wrong chat groups and stuff, but that was okay. She did a good job. It's 2 Corinthians 5, 8. The Bible tells us that to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. And Psalm 1611 declares that in the Lord's presence there is fullness of joy. So right now, she is not only in the Lord's presence, but Mar Marcia is on an overflowing sense of peace and joy and able once again to visit with Coy and Florence and Ralph and all of the others who have preceded her into heaven. During the times of loss and mourning that we may experience over the next days and weeks ahead, we can also take hope in this great promise. This time of year, we celebrate that Jesus' life, his death on the cross, and his resurrection has removed the sting out of death. This is a Christian's greatest hope, eternal rest with him and the saints that go before us. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for the life, the love, the memories, the heart of Marcia Purcell, the many roles that she embraced during her life here with us, wife, mother, single mother of five, grandmother, great-grandmother, worship leader, Living Waters ministry pastor, encourager, a listening ear, a provider, a believer, and prayer warrior. As we pass through this time of loss and mourning, Lord, we ask that you would send the Holy Spirit to anoint us, to fill us, and bring comfort to us. Fill the void that we feel with the loss of my mom. Console our aching souls and bring hope and restoration 
to our broken hearts. We thank you, Heavenly Father, that she will live on in the memories and the priorities that she has passed down to us. Her influence will be felt when we gather as a family. Her care and concern for each individual and what is currently going on in their lives. And of course, the echoes of joy and celebration as we sing Christmas carols on Christmas Eve. Jesus, thank you for my mom. She was the best and set a high bar that, and provided an indelible pattern for mothers coming up after her. We thank you, Heavenly Father, Holy Spirit, and Jesus for bringing healing, comfort, hope, and in time, joy. In Jesus' name. Amen. promised 